here to talk about BDD with Xamarin and SpecFlow. It's something we use in the company I work with um, and it actually helped me during when I arrived and I can see that it helps a lot of new people that arrive in the company and that is new to the app because the app is big and I'm going to show basically what we do. So Just Eat is a big company in UK, it's the most selling, it's like a, it's the business is similar to Deliveroo, it's basically a, delivery, a food delivery system. Uh, and uh, my team is the partner side, so we do apps that basically help restaurants and drivers to have a better communication between them and to make sure that their delivery is made easier. Um, so basically, um, we have this app called Order Pads, which basically is where the, um, the restaurants can manage their orders, say the order is on its way, uh, see details, reject, because they can control everything that are done in our website by the customer side. They can control their drivers and uh, basically assign different orders to different drivers and control everything and uh, basically is a big app and this is done in Xamarin. So it's a big challenge, it's been for two years. We are seven of us, seven Xamarin developers there. Um, this is deployed in 45,000 45, restaurants worldwide. We are in Canada, we are in Australia, we are in Mexico, Brazil, uh, Spain, Italy. Um, so this is, it's been quite a nice challenge personally and for all the team. Um, so this is the new app that I'm working now. Uh, I started like two months ago. Uh, basically is the app that the drivers have in their uh, motorcycles or bikes, whatever they use. So they can say that they are on its way. It uses geofencing. The, when they reach the area of the client of the, the house they are going to deliver, is automatically send a message. So this is basically to create a seamless driver and restaurant experience. This is what my team does. Um, so now focused uh, and what I want to talk. So. What is BDD? BDD is quite big. I'm not going to explain what is BDD. There's big books about it, 500 pages, uh, and there's nothing I can put in here now. Uh, what I'm going to say to you is basically uses a uh, semi-formal language um, that everybody in the company can understand. This is basically, uh, sorry, nowadays teams, like big companies or smaller companies either, um, too. Uh, basically, they have all of these people. Um, there is no only developers anymore. Uh, so we need to target different ty type of skill sets and make sure that people that come from different areas and don't understand code can actually uh, understand a little bit of what they are working with. Uh, for example, the project manager or the scrum or business analysts and everything, they need really to understand how it works to can like understand all the features of the app and uh, the documentations sometimes are not very well done uh, and this is why BDD can help us with. Uh, so what language can we use so that the, all these people, what happened, sorry, all these people can understand? That's Gherkin. Who here heard, uh, heard about Gherkin? Someone? One, two, oh nice, at least I'm saying something new to everyone. Um, Gherkin is basically the semi-formal language that a BDD uses uh, that can basically um, describe how the app works, all the behavior of the app, but without saying how the behavior is actually created in the background. So basically describes how your app works, what, they are, or you, or what your app actually can do, but it doesn't actually explain how it's done in the background. And mostly is used by documentation and UI tests so this is what we come from with BDD. This is a little example of Gherkin. This is per English. Everyone can understand. Uh, this is basically explaining, I'm going to use the Tasky Pro um, Xamarin sample app during this, uh, this presentation. So it's basically one of the features that that app contains. And uh, any of those people that are not actually developers can come here and understand what this feature does. Um, sorry, it's clicking too much. So basically, in the last slide, you say that um, a Gherkin is a language that Cucumber understands. So I'm going to try to, I'm not going to focus on what Cucumber is, um, but basically, this is not new. This, is, uh, this is already exists for like uh, native development, 
which they use Calabash um, to do, that is a Ruby-based framework. Um, and basically, we, you can still use this uh, Calabash to basically do your UI tests if you want to for Xamarin. But I'm going to bring something in C Sharp that's going to make it easier for people that actually do C Sharp every single day. Um, I think who heard about Xamarin UI tests? And most, yeah, we've been talking here today, tomorrow as well, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, basically, it's very similar to Calabash, but it uses C Sharp and N unit. So something that people are used to do in C Sharp development with like unit tests and everything. This is a little example on the top um, about how do you, we implement these with Xamarin UI tests. I forgot one line, that's my bad. I already know that I forgot. Uh, but anyway, people like uh, non-technical non people may not understand this. It's quite clear for us as developers, but some BAs or you, any of the other uh, positions that you have in your, in your team can, can look at this and be like, I don't know what it is. I don't need to understand this. Uh, so basically, what I'm going to try to do now, wait, oh God, what's happening in here? Sorry. Um, we can try to explain them what is C Sharp, but it's going to take too long for them to understand what it is, and we don't want to lose time, and they don't need to understand what C Sharp is, because it's not in their uh, skill set. Uh, that's where spec flow is going to appear. So basically, what spec flow is going to do is going to fill the gap that we have between Xamarin UI tests and the Gherkin, putting them together so you can define features and steps um, using Gherkin, and the implementation of those steps can be C-sharp code, any C-sharp code. If you want to do anything else with it, you can do anything else with it with, without being automated tests. Uh, but we're going to add on those that C sharp steps implementation our Xamarin UI tests code, so we make sure that it runs the UI tests, and at the same time we end up being having a good documentation with all the features of it, and uh, run UI tests with all the features. And you know that w when if you do something wrong and the app breaks, you go to Xamarin Test Cloud and you can see it. And new people that join in the company, for example, I joined this company one year ago. The big app was being developed for like one year and a half. And when I arrived, I, I was like going through the code, trying to understand how it works and what it does. And one of my, one of my friends said like, oh, go to our Specflow project and see all the features that he has. He's going to understand at least what he does, all the features. That, and I actually read it, and it was pretty easy to understand all, all the functions that are inside of the app. Because who updates documentation these days? If you put like in, a, in the document, a separated document, you end up being out of date really fast. No one is going to update it, and uh, it happens everywhere. Uh, so this is actually going to help you to have a proper clean documentation with all the steps of your app for people that join, for people that are not developers to understand what the app does. Um, yeah, basically is this. I made this presentation very short when I saw that I was the last one. I'm really jet lagged and um, I, I, I'm going to for the demo and it's going to be quite faster than the other ones. Um, I'm going to show you now a little bit of um, a little bit of spec flow. So basically, first thing you need to do, uh, you need to come to tools, extension and updates online and search for spec flow because you need to add a plugin to allow you to use it. So if you search spec flow, spec flow for Visual Studio 2017. So it allows you to uh, use feature files, generate automatic code, whatever. So now, let's going to show you. So this uh, Tasky Androids and iOS, this is the one that I downloaded from the samples of Xamarin. I just added this Tasky spec flow one. Uh, this is basically um, adds, you need to add a unit framework which I recommend to you 6.4 maximum, otherwise it doesn't run on te uh, test cloud. By now, they don't support 2.6.4 up on test cloud. Uh, and you need to add Xamarin UI tests, and you need to add uh, this spec flow NuGet package. So it's going to generate automatically your code and, uh, when you um, create a feature. So I'm going to open here. Uh, 
a feature. It's going to put it a little bit bigger. Way. No, I need it. Can you read it? Cool. Um, so basically, this is the example that was in the, the slides with a little bit more one different to show how can you play with, with different, uh, you can pass parameters to your steps and create like different scenarios with different parameters, whatever. Um, so basically, this file generates automatically when you install that, this all these uh, end unit framework tests. This is automatically generated. You don't need to care about this. As soon as you save, it generates this and refresh it. And uh, when you go to your uh, unit test sessions, it's going to appear there as a unit test to run. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit of the implementation in here. So I have two screens. I have the screen names, add task screen and home screen. In the add task screen, I have basically all the, um, sorry, all the, um, the UI views that I need to interact with my, new, my UI tests. Basically, I'm querying them by marked. So marked, basically, in UI tests, he goes to every single property and try to find this parameter that you set in here. He goes to ID, he goes to text, he goes try to find something with this uh, and retrieves you that view. Um, and a uh, home screen, same example, just an add button and an image. And basically, we have some common steps. This common steps is because he's using more than one feature. So I normally put, have one that adds more common steps. So I would say add, create a new task is going to be a common step because it's the main function of this app. Um, and basically, what you see in here is like, as soon as you put binding, he knows this class is going to bind to some uh, steps on the feature files. And you need to use this attribute given when it didn't need to match your, uh, sorry, given when uh, in your feature file. Uh, and basically, I am on the home screen. What it does, it waits for the element add button just to see if the add button exists in the screen. So you are exactly in that screen. Just make sure you are there. And um, I had a new task called, and you have the parameter. That's why it allows us to use uh, this, um, this parameter with like the string with the name of the task. And go going to basically click, uh, wait for that button, tap it, take a screenshot, wait for element uh, entry, and it is going to enter the text, your parameter in the text field, and take another screenshot. And we have Mark has done steps as well. It's just more of the same. This is like UI tests, as I'm in UI tests, app tap, tap is very, very straightforward. Um, and this is the add task, sorry, add task steps. And, uh, it just makes sure when uh, I press save uh, and uh, that I sh they make sure that the, uh, the, the task was actually added to the list. So now, I have another one in here, but this is not actually, uh, it's just another test. I'm going to run them all on my device. This is when things start to fail. Um, Let's so, hope not. Let's run UI this. So now, in my device, it should, should start flicking and uh, opening the app and basically go through every single UI test that I created in here. Um, and this can be uploaded to Xamarin Test Cloud. I'm not going to do it in here. Uh, but it's normally what we do in our pipeline in my, in my company. Uh, we use um, Team City, Team City gen generates the package. Uh, we have a, a line to, that uploads automatically the APK to the Xamarin Test Cloud and runs the Xamarin Test Cloud for us to get a proper green pipeline to know when we can pin that build to be released. Um, pretty much, this is it. Yeah. 
So, yeah. For me, I think um, some people, when I talk about this, it's not the first time I'm, talk I'm doing this talk, to say, oh, this is too much, I don't need this, all this text in here, and there's no compiler. If you don't have, you need to run and see the errors. And uh, so it's not, it's, it's not, it's not, I don't, I'm not saying that you need to use these all the time. If it's only like 10 people, like everyone is developer, you don't need to use this. But for big teams like mine, like 25 people, where seven are developers and the rest are, some of them, I don't know, even know what they do. Um, yeah, it's actually good to have something like this so you can deliver for them. So, oh, I explain you the app those. And it's just like, uh, I have this in a file. And I just give to them, oh, just read this. You can understand everything that I have those. And uh, they don't keep talking to me. But, uh, um, but for the people that don't want to waste time doing all of this English and all, I have another thing that I want to show to you. Um, that is basically this POP, page object pattern, is used inside of Xamarin. They use this. Uh, it's basically a pattern for your white test without involving spec flow in English. So if you are only developers or you're doing your own app, um, you can just go through this. Uh, just take the link. I'll, I will give you the link or whatever. Um, this is, we are using this now. We are not using spec flow in the smaller projects, the one that I showed of the driver app. Um, we started doing this because people, some developers decided, and we just say like, Okay, let's try it, because this is new for us as well. Um, and I'm going to show you their example. Uh, tests. Tasky tests. So basically, there is no English involved. But when you do UI tests, it can be quite messy for you to understand what it does. and don't have like a clear uh, structure from the start to the end of the test. In here, you can actually, as a developer, read I open task clicks page, I select the task, uh, task details page dot delete, task list page dot. So basically this is like new page execute, new page execute, new page execute, and you can actually read it as a pattern and see what it does from the beginning to the end, just like the steps on um, spec flow, but without involving all the English and uh, all the coding and all the lines matching each other with attributes, sometimes it fails. Uh, sometimes it says to you uh, that is not. Um, so let me just say, for example, this ends. So I save the task. The, you cannot defend, define an attribute as end. You need to define the attribute with the one previous to it. So basically, sometimes you need to have. Imagine that you repeat this this line, but it's not. Sometimes it's when, sometimes it's then, some, sometimes it's given. So you need to have three attributes for each one, one for given, one for, uh, so you basically need to have mm, this. Uh, what is the other one? What is the other one? Given. So it gets quite, it gets quite high maintenance. So it's like if you don't need this, or if your team is small, I, I would say the POC, the, the, the other, I don't even remember the name. Um, the POP, uh, I think, is a better solution for, for some cases. I think uh, SpecFlow is a good solution for all the cases. That's it for me. I was quite fast. Sorry, guys. Um, Questions? Yeah, Come on. Samples? samples? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have my sample, if you want to. Um, is in my uh, GitHub page. I can share with you. This one, if you want to copy the link or take a picture, Tasky Pro, uh, basically is exactly the one that I run in here. Uh, and you have everything explained there. Uh, I, learned, I learned this in my company, so I didn't like actually went to some samples and tried to understand how it works. I had a really good 
uh, example of how it works already with like thousands of features. Um, but if you want to like take a look at the code, uh, feel free to download it. Mo, let's go to the party. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you need to change it. That's why I say it's quite. Sorry. Can you repeat? Sorry, I didn't get the question. Can you repeat? Just. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But later on, um, you want to enhance that feature. Yeah. Right. Like maybe another, another option button or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So do we edit that same uh, directing file or do we create, create a new directing file? Uh, I would say update. Just keep updating the feature that actually represents the current version you have. Uh, just because if it's a documentation, it actually needs to be up to date. That's another good thing that this brings to you. It's like you change something from version 1 to version 2. Maybe your UI test is going to fail. First of all, it's going to be read in the pipeline, so you need to update your UI test. So you need to add new features or fix the features that you add. I would say, if to respect BDD, the first thing you should do is create the step, make the step fail, and after, create the code to make the step green, uh, like you do in TDD when uh, you go in your unit tests on the precise direction. Uh, that's, you should follow this rule, but it doesn't happen often in BDD. It happens often more times in TDD to be all these, like, or create the test, fail the test, create, create, create until the tests go green. Um, this is already a lot of work. There's not a lot of my friends, that, friends people that I talk with uh, about this, that actually create the feature, create the steps, uh, and after make it fail because it doesn't have any codes and starts creating all the UI elements and makes first green, second green, third green. Uh, this doesn't happen often, to be honest. What? So the base, uh, the tester app, uh, if not from Jamlin, message is not the Jamlin app. Sorry? We can go for UI test. Uh, can you repeat, sorry? It's the base app, uh, which we are going to test. Yeah. That one is not developed in Jamlin. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can use UI tests to test. It's like, it's like Calabash. They use Ruby. So you type Ruby, whatever, because this generates an APK. In, uh, with yeah. With yeah, you can. You can test, you can create the tests with C Sharp, right, using Xamarin UI tests for actually test a native app. Um, and uh, basically, you can do the opposite direction. Don't use Xamarin UI tests and use Calabash, that is Ruby, to actually test because these two different APKs. So it's like the test DLL where all the steps of the running is there, all the coordinates to touch are there. And uh, your APK is two different things that are uploaded uh, to the test cloud or are running in your, f in, your, in your device. So yeah, both of them can be swapped. This needs to be an APK or a, a, a EPA for EPA for Apple and a DLL created whatever you do with C Sharp or, yeah, that's it. More? Thank you, guys. <laughs>